Jesus. None like you, Jesus. None like you, Jesus. I just speak healing in this place right now. If there's someone that you are battling an infirmity right now, I just feel really strong to just say healing. In the name of Jesus, be made whole now. In the name of Jesus, be made whole now. Jesus, you're the healer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. How many of you love the Lord today? You love the Lord? God bless you. You may be seated. You may be seated. And I'm just going to share uh, what the Lord has just put on my heart. And uh, children are dismissed. Uh, God bless you, kids. And we just love the kids. Amen. Bless the children. Um, I, I'm going to tell you, we're, we're, we're the last weekend of 2020. And I'm... I'm, I'm I love every day. You know, I'm one of those people that I heard a long time ago, uh, live one day at a time and make it a masterpiece. And, and, and Brother Bob, I heard that years ago in a message from a, I was in Bible school and I heard a preacher say, live one day at a time and make it a masterpiece. And I, I tend to like that. I, I, I love that. And, but if there was ever a year that I was kind of excited to see go, just... In fact, let me, let me, you know, we've, we've had a great time. How many of you enjoyed your Christmas time? How many enjoyed Christmas Day? You ha did you have a good time? I, I kind of share with you about the food I ate and, well, my father-in-law ate. And, and we had a really good time, a breakaway of the Christmas holiday. But I'm just going to be honest with you. In, in the last eight or nine months, this has happened to me a few times. Maybe you're here and you kind of know what I'm going to talk about. Maybe you can lean into this. But, but how many of you, during the last like nine months, if you were sitting down at home and you were going to like watch a movie, have any of you said what I've said? And this is what I've said. I don't want to watch anything sad. I don't want to watch anything serious. I want to watch something funny. Anybody, anybody been there? There's enough going on. I just want, for the next hour and a half, I want my mind to be taken off what's going, around, uh, going on around us, and I want to watch something funny. I want to be able to go, God, that guy's a nut. Amen? How many know what I'm talking about? Just living in this crazy, crazy uh, world, living in this crazy, crazy time. In fact, I'll go as far as to tell you that within the last six months, from people here in Helena, Montana, just talking about what's going on in the world. You know, the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, in verse 10, it says, Put on the whole armor of God that, ye may able, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And the word wiles in some translations, uh, it, it's the schemes of the devil. Or in some translations it says that you may be able to stand against the strategies of the devil. I, I'm going to tell you something. I believe this with all my heart. I believe that in the last year, we have seen a, uh, a literally outright, in fact, th this is a good way. I don't play cards, but maybe you have before. Have you ever heard the term, he showed his hand? I believe that the enemy, I believe the devil has showed his hand in 2020. Amen? He showed his schemes. He's showed his strategies. He's showed his wiles. He's revealed himself. I mean, uh, just crazy what's going on. And still the elements, you know, I, uh, I don't mean, I'm just telling you a little, I don't mean to drag you back through 2020 on the last weekend of 2020, but just, just even right before Christmas, driving down the road here in Helena and hearing the story of a woman, and she was on the radio, I, I honestly... I can't tell you where she lived, but she was on the radio crying. And, and she said, uh, I, I own a restaurant. Uh, I have 30 employees. And she said, I am about to lose everything I've worked for all my life. I'm about to lose it all. And she said, a block down the road is a Walmart that's opened every day. And they will not allow me to even have a table outside. And I'm about to lose my whole life savings. And to me, I don't know about you. That just seems unjust. I... I just feel like that's wrong, amen? And so, I mean, we've had this Chinese, Wuhan, COVID, whatever, 
you want to call it, it, it literally was a biological weapon that was released across the world. Uh, we've had people experiencing economic collapses. We've seen riots in the streets. We just, guys, we, we've seen racial tension. I, I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. In the last 10 years, and I, I, listen, my mom and dad are hicks from the South. I'm just flat out telling you. I mean, my dad was born on Peanut Hill in, this is what my grand, John, this is what my granddad called it, Yoke, Alabama. Y-O-R-K, Yoke. I'm like, hey, granddad, it's York. But, but the point is, is, I mean, just Southern hicks, man. And even in the last 10 years, I'm like, praise God, we're over all this racial stuff. I mean, praise God. Amen. I mean, we're, all, and I didn't know, but to my chagrin and ignorance, it's back again. And, and it's like, the devil is really playing his hand, is he not? He's really revealing who he is and how he is. And he's trying to stir up narratives and keep it. And then we have the media. And I'm just going to flat out tell you, and I know we're being filmed right now. I think the national media is a false prophet right now in Jesus' name. I think they've told us and fed us a big lie. It's just been a big lie that people are believing. And I'm just, it's just amazing. And I, I really... I, I'm saying all that to you to say about six months ago somebody in our church we were outside in the parking lot I cannot tell you what day or night it was but they go pastor I think that we're right now in spiritual warfare over our nation our nation is in spiritual warfare and then then within just a week or two after that somebody in the church says I'm telling you we are in a battle of light versus darkness so they didn't call it spiritual warfare but they said we're in a battle of light versus darkness and then then if you didn't know this we literally from this church had about four people four and they were all women but four women went to Washington DC to pray around our nation's capital a couple of months ago it Diane, it might have been more than four yeah, and Wanda went from Butte. So, so yeah, and and so now you gotta you gotta understand this. They went to Washington D.C. to pray. Isn't that doesn't that sound great? They went to pray, but while they were there praying, there were witches and warlocks praying over the nation's capital. There were Satanists praying over they literally said we could feel the spiritual battle going on we're walking around the the white house praying and there are witches and warlocks speaking curses over the white house while we're praying is that not crazy listen don't you think there's a spiritual warfare going on right now don't you believe that there's some even to the place sean foyt he went to seattle wash uh seattle washington last summer and and he went to minneapolis minnesota and led these prayer conferences and he felt led of God to have a, a worship conference and worship rally in Washington, D.C. And during the worship rally, this just I'm just giving you an idea of the intensity of this. During the worship rally, a Satanist came underneath the tent and threw a bucket of pig blood on the drummer while he was playing the drums. Listen, I hate to break the news to you, but we're in a spiritual battle. Amen? And I think the devil has kind of played his hand. I, I think he's showed his hand he's he's revealed his schemes and his strategies and his tactics and this this christmas holiday after and the kitchen was a mess but after we cleaned the kitchen my son-in-law my son-in-law and i were sitting there at the table we were by ourselves just talking and we were kind of talking about what's been going on this year and we weren't really rehashing it but we were talking about the spiritual battle that was going on and all of a sudden he goes i really believe that the darkness has intensified and he said not only has the darkness intensified but he said it forces the light of the kingdom of God to intensify and when he said that as soon as he said that now this was the other night where I'm, I got a glass of tea in my hand how many like tea and I, I'm sitting there got a glass of tea in my hand because it's even sweet low in it and, and I'm sitting there because I ate a big old piece of banana cream pie with it so you know I got all the calories from the banana because I gotta you know come on Bob I gotta do something okay so I'm sitting there and he says the darkness has intensified and it's caused the kingdom it's caused the light to increase and intensify and when he said that the Holy Spirit spoke to me and this is what I heard in my spirit the Holy Spirit said to me he goes the lamp of the body is the eye and if the eye is full of light how great is that light but the lamp of the body if it's dark 
The whole body is dark. How great is that darkness? I heard that when we were talking about this whole difference between the darkness of hell and the light of the kingdom of God. So I want you to go in your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 6. And we're just going to look at this for just a minute. Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to look at verses 22 and 23. This is just where God's, God's taking me. Matthew 6, 22 to 20. Susie, that was such a beautiful picture you made. That just, just I didn't open it till Christmas Day. And that was just wonderful. Okay, so anyway, look at this with me. Look at this with me. Ma Matthew chapter 6, we're going to look at verse 22 and 23. The lamp of the body is the eye. Now, the first thing I want to talk to you about is this word eye is a metaphor for your heart. Okay? Let me, let me explain this to you. Because the verse before this, if you read Matthew 6, 21, it says something like this. Where your treasures are so your heart will be also. That what you put your treasure in is the direction your heart goes, okay? So then Jesus says, the lamp of the body is your eye, okay? If therefore your eye is good, everybody say good, okay? Good. Now, some translations say this, if therefore your eye is single, and we're going to get to that in a minute, if your eye is good, or if your eye is single, your whole body will be full of what? Light. Isn't that amazing? So if your eye is, the lamp of the body is the eye, and if your eye is full of light, it will cause your whole body to be full of light. Now, look with me at verse 23. A couple people caught something here in verse 23 in the morning service. But if your eye is bad. Now, interesting word about the word bad here. Some of you, your translation is the word evil. And the Greek word for that is porneros. Let me say it again. Porn eros is the Greek word. They get pornography from that word evil. If your eye is bad or if your eye is evil, your whole body will be full of what? Darkness. And if therefore the light that is in you is darkness. Okay, stop. Let, somebody caught it in the morning service. You mean to tell me that, I think Nina was on it. You mean to tell me there is a dark light? There is a light that is, that you mean to tell me that people live in this world and they think they're walking in the light and they're really in darkness? They think they got the, in fact, they may be what we call today the woke crowd. They think they've arrived and they've been enlightened in something, but they're really walking in darkness. Look at this. But if your eye is evil or your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how does Jesus finish this? How great is that darkness. The first thing I want to say to you guys as we go into 2021 is I believe the kingdom of God, I believe the body of Christ needs a heart and they need their whole being to be illuminated with the light of Jesus Christ. Amen. We need an illumination of the light of the master. We need an illumination of our whole being to be the light of the king of kings and the Lord of lords. I want you to look with me at John chapter 1. And we're going to look at verses 1 through 9. Now, John doesn't talk about the birth of Jesus. John starts off his gospel talking about the majesty of who Jesus was. I mean, the incredible aspects of the king of glory. Amen? This is how this baby came. Full of the power of God, okay? And so look with me, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. And begin to notice how John is literally describing the king of glory. Amen? In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was what? Right. Now, how does John, describing who Jesus is, how does John describe this life? How does he describe the life? 
in him was life, and the life was what? The light of men. You see that? Jesus was life, and that life was the light of men. And the light shines in the what? So we're, again, remember this, the lamp of the body is the eye. And if the eye is good, if the eye is single, the whole body will be full of what? Light. If the light is dark, how great will that darkness be? Now look what he says here. And the light that shines in the what? Darkness. And the darkness did not what? The darkness didn't even have an understanding of what the true light really was. The darkness might have thought that it was in the light, but it really couldn't even comprehend. Are you following me today? The true light of Jesus. Let's look at verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Now, I shared this a while ago. I'm going to just share this with you again. Every time in the history of humanity, every time in world history when there has been complications and when there has been literally dynamics that were changing our culture. Now you hear what I'm about to say. While that verse is up, God will always raise up a man or a woman. God always, God doesn't use an angel. God is never, you just, angel go down there and take care. God doesn't use an angel. God always raises up what? A man or a woman. There were women in the Bible like Deborah. God can raise up a man. God can raise up a woman. Here we see it again. There was a man and he was sent from who? God. And his name was John. Verse 7. This man came for a witness. Now what was he witnessing about? To bear witness of the what? Light. There was a new light that had come shining into a dark world. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. Amen? He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that what? Light. That was the true light. So again, there's a dark light and there's a true light. That was the true light which gives life to every man coming into the world. That our hearts, that who we are, that the being that God created me to be, in 2021 would allow the illumination of Jesus, the light of Jesus to illuminate every bit of my being. Listen, I want every crook, I want every cranny. Can I say that? Does that even make sense? I want every crook, I want every cranny of who I am to be illuminated with the light of the kingdom of God. Amen? I want the light of Jesus to shine. I want it to be like a, a, a cutting torch. You can't look at a cutting torch. It's too bright. It'll make you go blind. I want a cutting torch to be shining out of me. Amen? The light of Jesus. Now, I want to read to you Luke chapter 11. And we're going to start in verse 33 because, again, I want my life to be illuminated by the light of Jesus. I don't want a false light. I don't want anything like that. I want my life to be completely body, soul, and spirit to be illuminated with the light of Jesus. Luke chapter 11, verse 33, kind of describes this story or what Jesus is teaching in the same words. But I want you to see this here again. No one, when he has lit a lamp, you see that word lamp? That word lamp is talking about this light. Some translations say candle, but it's referring to the light of Jesus, okay? No one, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a secret place or under a basket, but on a what? Lampstand, that those who come may see the light. We, we don't, when that light gets lit within us, we're not to go run and hide. Amen? We're not to go run another way. I thought it was kind of funny, but I'll just tell you this. I, my, my, my youngest son just had, Chris, a little experience of this this year. We went hunting, and we went into a small town, not Helena, but we were in another town, and we stopped in this small town to eat lunch while we were hunting. And the high school in this small town let out 
And so people from the high school ate lunch in this cafe that we were in. And there was a young man that goes to this church. And when he saw me and my son, he ran the other way. And my son, he didn't understand. He, he couldn't understand this, this young man. Talks to him at church. Why would he run the other way when he was around his friends? Are you hearing me? So my, my son at 12 years old experienced a little bit of rejection at that moment. And, and this is what his loving father said. It's okay, I experience it all the time. <laughs> I mean, I've had people run from me in Walmart. Amen. Safeway, they go down aisle 11. The point being, <laughs> amen, amen. The point being is that young man is living one way at church and another way. And when he saw that pastor there, he had to run the other way. Now, I'm not judging him. I'm not running him down. I'm praying for him. But the point being is, God has called us to be the light. We don't hide that light under a basket. We don't hide that light, but we let that light, what it says right there, that those who come may do what? Those who come around me, whether I'm at work, or I'm at church, or I'm in the grocery store, or I'm in a little cafe, those that are around me see that light. Amen? Look at the next verse. The lamp, here's that teaching again. This is the same thing said in Matthew 6, 22. The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, or the word single, your whole body is full of light. But when your eye is bad, your body is full of darkness. Therefore, take heed. Take heed. That the light which is in you is not. Do you see Jesus calling that light again? A, a light of darkness. Take heed that the light which is in you is not darkness. If then your whole body is full of light. Having no part dark. The whole body will be full of light. As when the bright shining of the lamp gives you light. Guys, let me just say this. We need to allow the Christ, we need to allow Jesus, the anointed one, to illuminate our complete being. Amen? Going into this new year, going into what we've experienced as spiritual warfare, to be illuminated by the light of the gospel. Amen? Now, I want to say it to you like this. If the light it within you, now just follow me through this for a minute. If the, the light or the eye within you is dark, then the Bible says the whole body is full of what? Darkness. In fact, in John chapter 1, it says that the darkness could not even comprehend. Now, let me, let me say it to you like this. A few years ago, one of my daughters, and I'm going to tell you the truth, I'm not really sure, Ashley, what it was, but one of my daughters was on Facebook or something. Anybody ever heard of that before? You've heard of MySpace and FaceTime? Is that what it's called? No, Spacebook and MyFace. Am I close enough? One of my daughters was on that, and uh, people were I, in a chat room. Can I, can I call it that? People were dialoguing in a chat room, and all of a sudden there came an issue, a cultural issue in our nation, but it's also biblically a sin, okay? Just flat out a sin. And so people were talking about this, this cultural Jane issue, and my daughter said, Dad, I'm going to, I want to, I'm going to, comment on that and I go and I just said to her I go well make sure you do it in love and she goes well I don't even know what to say and so when I was in college I, I took a class called apologetics all that is a big all that is, is a big fancy word for how to argue the gospel <laughs> okay so I, she goes could you help me dad and I go well let me see and so I gave a couple of now watch this biblical perspectives to make the point clear that God loves a sinner, but he hates the sin. And I, and I gave some biblical... So, she was... 
And I go, and you could say, and, and, and what else, Dad? And all I can tell you is, when she hit that button, send, blink. Kaboom! I mean, the response was, I mean, it was like venom and poison coming out. It was like, great, to the place, oh, thank you, brother, to the, to the place, to the place that I told her, I go, don't ever do that again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was great. We're going to kill you. You are a hater, you bigot. <laughs> I mean, that's what happened, man. And I'm like, whoa. Let me say it again. If your eye is dark, if your heart is dark, you can't even comprehend. You, 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 in fact, I'm going to say this to you. I'm going to say this to you. Today in our nation, I believe this with all my heart, liberal progressive socialism is not a political agenda. It's a religion. It's a religion. And, and right now, we live in a day and age where if your eye is dark, how great is that dark? You can't even comprehend. You can't even have an understanding on that level. Amen? It just goes right over your head. Have you ever been at a Christmas dinner or a Thanksgiving dinner and somebody keeps saying something, so you go, well, I'll just say something about Jesus to him," And all of a sudden, boof, goes the opposite. Anybody ever been there besides me? Anybody ever had to tell your family members, okay, it's Christmas. Bring it down about 30 notches. No, that only happens in preachers' families, right? Okay. It's just, it's like, wow, what just happened? Let me show you in the Bible. Go to John chapter 9. We were in John 1, and we read to verse 7. But now look with me at John chapter 9. Nine, And I just, I want to show you the dynamic because, Brother Bob, a lot of times people that are in darkness but say they're walking in the light, it's a religious spirit. Okay? They think they got the corner market and they know it all, but they could be in darkness and not even have an understanding of what's going on. Amen? And, and we have got to be in our day and age very aware of that amen look with me at john and I, i'm going to do my best to paraphrase this story uh but look with me john chapter 9 we're going to start in verse 1 and let's read john chapter 9 verse 1 and we're going to read through verse 7 now incredible story in the bible i'm going to read it and we're going to i'm going to paraphrase a little bit of the story and then we're going to go on watch this now as jesus passed by he saw a man who was what blind now this is the crazy thing about this story. You, you got to hear this. The story is about Jesus healing someone that was what? But the, as the story progresses, you realize that it's the religious people that are really what? And they can't see. They think they can see, but in all actuality, they are blind. They cannot see. In fact, another word, I, I talked to somebody one time that was blind as a little boy. And I go, what's it like? And they go, it's all darkness. I'm just in darkness. Look at this. Now, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. His disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sin, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me. Now here's, here it is again. Look what Jesus says here. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is what? Day. What is day? In fact, I, I'm, I don't think I'm a nosy person, but I noticed on this side of the church a while ago that John Tappy was talking to his wife, Chris, and he was talking to something about the sunlight coming through that window. I saw it with, as they would say in the old, old town, with me own eyes. Was I right? Was I right? You were saying something about the light coming in that window, okay? And brother, if it's bright, you can shut the blinds. But anyway, so 
Jesus is saying right here, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day light. Why? For night is coming. What's night? Darkness is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, what does Jesus declare here before he is about to kill this blind man? I am the light. As long as I'm here, I am the light of the world. And I just want to point out something. His spirit's still here in every one of us. So as long as we're here with Jesus in us, light is being shown everywhere. That was free. Keep going. When he had said these things, now how does Jesus heal this person? He took a cloth and put it over his shoulders. How does Jesus heal this person? He spat on the ground and made clay with his what? We're in Montana. You don't say, I have to saliva. I have, I'm salivating and I need to salivate. Do we say anything like that? All I can say is, if you ever have to spit out of your truck, go fast enough that it doesn't blow on your window. Because I did that one time going down Sierra and I was going, Christ! Christ! Oh, I don't know how we got off of that. He sped on the ground, he made clay with the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. And he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated scent. So he went and he washed and came back. What happened to the man when he went to the pool of Siloam? When he washed, he came back what? <coughs> Buddy, I'm here to tell you a miracle happened. I'm here to tell you, um, there were people that lived there that had watched that little boy and they had helped that little boy when he was six years old walking down the road blind. They had helped him into buildings. And all of a sudden, this grown man that was born blind, that all the people, all the whole area, the whole community saw this boy grow up blind is now what? Healed and he has received his... Do you know there was some talking going on? Amen. There was a stir going on when this little boy, which was now a grown man, was healed of his blindness. And now he's received his sight. To the place that the Pharisees called him in. And when they called him in, they go, tell us your story. And he told them. He said, man, this guy, he said he was the light of the world. And he sped on the ground. He put the mud on my eyes, told me to go wash and I'm telling you, I received my sight. And they're like, you're lying. You, were, you weren't born blind. And so the Pharisees went and got his mom and daddy. You can read the Bible. You can read the whole story. They called his mom and daddy. And said, is this your son? Yes, he is. Was he born blind? Yes, he was. And he can now see? It's amazing. I mean, they couldn't see it. Let me say it again. They couldn't see it look with me at verse 24 now we're going to read this i'm not going to talk about it. i'm not going to paraphrase it we're going to read it we're going to read verse 24 through 41 listen to this story listen to how people that said they walked in the light were still blind look how people that said they understood the light were so much in darkness that they could not comprehend the true light that their perspective was dark. Look at this. So again, they called the man who was blind and said to him, give glory to God. We know, talking about Jesus, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. But one thing I know, that though I was blind, I can see. Then they said to him again, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you, you hear that? Already. And you did not. How many wives have said this about their husbands? Amen. Here this young man that's been healed says, I've already told you. You, you're not listening. You're not comprehending. You're not receiving what I'm putting out. I was blind and I see. Why do you want to hear it again, he said. Do you also want to become one of his disciples? 
Then they reviled him and said, You are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spoke to Moses, and for this fellow, we do not know where he is from. The man answered and said to them, Why, this is a marvelous thing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he has opened my eyes. Now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. Since the world began, it has been unheard that anyone opened the eyes of the one who was born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do. This is the, the man that has been healed. Don't you guys understand? If this man were not from God, he couldn't do it. They answered and said to him, You were completely born in sins. And you are teaching us. And they cast him out. Do you see that if your heart is dark, if your eyes are dark, how great is that darkness that it, it can't comprehend. Now look what Jesus says to him real quick. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? And he answered and said, Who is he that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, you have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. Then he said, Lord, what? Do you understand that when Jesus said that to this man, Jesus literally was saying, you've been healed of your natural eyesight. Now I'm about to heal your supernatural eyesight. Amen? Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Can I tell you something real quick? We're going to jump into this in just a moment, but I, I'm going to tell you this. There are a lot of hats we all wear. There are a lot of hats that you wear. You can wear the hat, I'm going to use me as a, you can wear the hat as a husband, as a father, as a pastor. Amen? You can wear all these different different hats. But do you know the purpose that God's placed in your life? Do you know why the light of the gospel shines in you? Because God desires for you to give glory to Him. Amen? God desires that we are worshipers of Him and that we give glory and we attribute the kingdom of God and all the attributes of God. We praise and we worship in God. You know, a lot of people would say, well, on Thursday nights you come to the church and you pray, but you also do worship. Why do you worship while you're praying? Why do you worship before you pray? Because I'm telling you, that is what God has called us to do. Amen? He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. And Jesus said, for judgment I have come into this world, that those who do not see, you see this, may see. And that those who see may be blind. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said, Are we blind also? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you have, would have no sin. But now you say, We see. Therefore you what? Your sin remains. Guys, going into 2021, I'm telling you, Holy Spirit wants the light of Jesus to be illuminated in us. Amen? And He wants to change our filter. He wants to change. Because if our perspective is dark, if our heart is dark, all of our perception will be dark. Amen? Let me tell you a story real quick. I got time, right? Yeah. I was talking to a man in Helena, Montana. In this valley. I was at his front door at his house. I was working for him. I was not going as a pastor to visit him. He told me he had just been diagnosed, diagnosed with a heart complication and a heart issue. And as soon as he told me that, the Holy Spirit said, you lay hands on him and pray for him, he's going to be healed. Now, I'm telling you, Bob, that doesn't happen to me all the time, to hear God say, you lay hands on him or you lay hands on her and they'll be healed. But I heard that. And I looked at this man, and I go, can I tell you a story? I didn't say, I want to give you a testimony. I go, can I tell you a story? He said, sure. And I go, well, I said, 
I knew a man, and, and, and his name was Randy, and I said he had the same issue in his heart that you have. And uh, they did surgery, and they put a stent in his heart. And he was going, yes, yes. And I go, but he still was having problems. His, his blood wasn't flowing properly, and he was really struggling. So we called him up in a, in a church service. And we laid hands on him, and we prayed for him. Now, this is the story. I said, and when we prayed for him, the complications went away. He noticed that his breathing was better. He noticed he had better blood flow. He felt better. He had energy. And I said, a couple months later, he went back to the doctor, and they did x-rays on his heart. And the doctor literally came into the room and was scratching his head and said, I don't know how this happened, but your heart ate up the stent. There's no stent in your heart anymore. It's gone. And I told this man, because the Holy Spirit said, you lay hands on him, you pray for him, he's going to be healed. And I told this man the story, and you know what he said? Well, that's not true. Medical records can prove that there are times and occasions that the heart literally is through the uh, blah, 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 the, the, the stent can disappear. And I went, oh, okay. Can I tell you another story? And I told him another testimony about how God healed a heart. You know what he said? I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Let me tell you why. Because medical records prove blah, blah, blah. Do you think I prayed for him? He wasn't ready. His perspective and his perception was dark. You know how he died? Heart complications. See, what comes through our filter is what comes out. In fact, it's Christmas. My, I have a daughter that works for Starbucks. Anybody ever heard of Starbucks? I wouldn't give them a pug nickel, but she makes money as I got their health insurance. But the point I'm getting at is, the point I'm getting at is, they make a Christmas blend coffee bean that is good. And she brings it home. And when that hot boiling water runs through that coffee filter, it makes some good. In fact, I'll just say it. Show enough good coffee. Amen? Because it goes through the filter. What's your filter like? What's your filter like? When the Lord tries to come in, when the Lord tries to shine his true light, what is going through your filter? Is there strychnine poison at the bottom of that filter that when God pours through that filter, strychnine poison is coming into that coffee pot? See, it's all about the filter. It's all about the eyes. Are your eyes open to the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ? Amen? Now, let me just say this to you. I just wanted to share with you the whole dynamic of allowing Jesus to illuminate our heart. I wanted to share with you about if your heart is dark, your perceptions will be dark, right? You won't have an understanding. You may think you're in the light, but you're, you can hear the story over and over, and you'll keep asking, how did he do that? Amen? But this is the last thing I want to say to you. In the time that we're living, and I started talking about the crazy things about 2020, in the time that you and I right now are living, now this is a word from the Lord. Don't you let the enemy distract you. I want to say it to you again. Don't you let the enemy distract you. Do you remember when we read Matthew 6, 22, that Jesus said, the lamp of the body is the eye? Do you remember I said as we were reading that, it says that if your eye is good, that your whole body will be full of light? And do you remember... I stopped for a moment and I said this. I said, the word good there also means single. If you look in your translation, a lot of your translations will say, if the eye is single, the whole body will be full of light. It's very interesting that it uses the word single there. In fact, if you break that word down in the Greek, it literally means this. To be focused on one thing. If your eye is single, if your eyes are focused on one thing, in fact, it literally goes further than focus. It literally means that you're following and pursuing. In fact, you're focused on one thing that directs you and catapults you into your purposes and into your destiny. And you know what you're focused on? Jesus. 
If your eye is focused, your eye is not distracted. You're not looking over here. You're not distracted with this. You're not distracted with this affection. Come on. Remember verse 21 said, Where your heart is, so your treasures will be. Or let me reword that. Where your treasures are, so your heart will be. And Jesus is saying, listen, if you get your focus on me, Paul the Apostle in Philippians chapter 3 said, this one thing I do, forgetting the past, forgetting those things that are behind me, and I press on towards the mark of the high. I'm focused in on Jesus. I'm pressing in with singleness of heart on this one thing. In fact, let me say this to you guys. Matthew chapter 6, where I'm reading from, Matthew 6, 22 and 23, if you look at... 10 verses later at Matthew 6 verse 33, it says it like this. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these what? Things will be added unto you. We got a lot of people during this Christmas time. They're seeking after the tree. They're seeking out. They didn't get what they wanted for Christmas. And they're running around the tree. And they Come on. And Jesus is saying, if you will put me first, if you will get your focus on me, if you will have a single heart and you'll put me first, you'll put me in your marriage first, you'll put me in your life first, you'll put me in all your relationships first, you'll put me first, all these other things I will add to you. Quit looking and pursuing the other things and Focus on the one thing. See, let me, let me tell you this. I, I took my family a few years ago. And I look back reg regrettably. I promised my, my two go girls, they're grown now, but I promised them when they were babies. They would watch these cartoon movies. I couldn't tell you what one of them was called. But they'd watch these cartoon movies. And at the end of these blasted cartoon movies, they would advertise this place called Disney World. They would make me go watch these cartoon movies with them at the theater. And I would be snoring. And my oldest daughter would go, Daddy, you wake up. And I'd go, <laughs> Audra, I finally, I, I, I told them as babies that I would take them. But I want to tell you something. I wasn't even able to take them when they were kids. I couldn't afford it. I, I finally had enough money saved to take them when they were adults. It was miserable. You could wait in line for three and a half hours to ride a 30 second ride. You don't even remember what ride you rode because you waited so long in line. I couldn't tell you the ride we were about to ride. I'm going somewhere with this. I couldn't even tell you the ride we were about to ride. All I knew is I was hurting, I was miserable, and I was tired. And because we were so hurting, so miserable, and tired, the, they did a Chinese acrobat act right in the middle of the line. You just So this is what you were doing. You were going... <laughs> Uh, 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 watching the Chinese acrobats because they were trying to distract you of the pain in your feet because you'd been standing so long. Now the crazy thing about these Chinese acrobats is they had one person come in on a one-wheeled bicycle. One wheel, one wheel. And they were coming in and then they had sticks in their hands. And on these sticks, they had, the, these people were throwing spinning plates in the air. They had a stick on their head. They had sticks in their hands. And this person was throwing spinning plates. And they were going on the top of the sticks. And they were doing like this with spinning plates going everywhere. And we were watching going, that fool going to drop one of them plates. Amen? They had a plate over here and a plate over there and a plate over here and a plate on their head. They had, and they were, boy, they were getting with the show. And, that, and you're just watching going, one of them plates are about to come down. That's what a lot of us look like in the spirit realm. We got our affections 
and we've got all our focuses and we're distracted over here and over there and over here and over there and we're spinning plates and we're trying to be a good husband and we're trying to be a good father and we're trying to be a good worker and we're trying to be this good and we're trying to do that right we're trying to be good here and trying to do that and listen Jesus is saying would you get all the distractions out of your life and would you focus on me and if you will put your focus on me I will add everything else I'm trying to save my marriage I'm trying to do good quit trying to save your marriage and start seeking Jesus and your marriage will be saved Let all the distractions stop. Seek Jesus. Get your focus on Jesus. Let me tell you something about this light real quick. The more you seek the light, the more the light shines through you. And the more the light shines through you, the more the witness you will be for others around you. Just tell you, some of you already hear, heard this, but I just want to tell you this. I, I didn't know this till. About five days ago, it was literally, I got the letter, uh, December the 23rd, I got this letter. Now, my son went to youth camp this year. He met Jose. Right, right, I don't know if you were in this church parking lot or where. Now, Audra, you probably already know this, but my son was already scheduled to go to the University of Montana here at Helena. He already had his classes chosen. He already had his classes selected to start that, the, the semester, the, the fall semester there. He meets Jose, and Jose goes, have you ever thought about joining the military? You'd probably be good. I don't know if you said that, but something like that, something in that nature. He just said, have you ever? And, and my son had never even, that thought had never, I had not been in the military. I thought it would have been awesome. I, please don't be offended. I think every teenager when they graduate high school should go in the military for one year boys and girls but anyway they do that in Israel if it's good enough for them it's good enough for us but the point being never mind okay well I digress but the point I'm getting at is he had never even had that thought till Jose mentioned that to him and then he goes to youth camp and he's praying about it the last night of camp and Trey Gerard who was in the first service walks up and goes I don't know why I'm telling you but can I tell you a story he said I was a sergeant in the Marine Corps and I was in Iraq and he named this boy, and he said he was just a private, but he was a sold-out Christian that loved God with all his heart. And I'm born again, and I'm a Christian today because of that private. And so my son went into the Marine Corps to be a witness. To be a witness. Just real quick, just to let you guys know, he writes a letter to us. I read it on December the 23rd. You know what the letter says? There are guys, there are recruits with me. And no matter what the drill sergeants are trying to put us through, at night, they can't understand how I'm walking in joy. And Dad, I've been able to witness to two of them. And I've had two of them say the sinner's prayer and ask Jesus into their heart. In boot camp. In boot camp. I sent back a letter to him and I went, Buddy, your work's cut out for you now. Now you've got to make some disciples. Amen? If we will get our focus on Jesus, if we will get, see, even though he's gone into the Marine Corps, he went into it to be a witness. He said, Dad, this is my mission field. I'm going into it to be a missionary. If we get our focus on Jesus, if we let all the distractions fall aside, we will be like a cutting torch for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you, let the distractions fall aside and get your focus on Jesus. Amen? Amen? Last thing I want to say to you today, Matthew chapter 25, I've shared this a few times this year, but I want to just touch on it again. Matthew chapter 25, talk about five foolish virgins and five wise virgins. Every one of them had lamps. Now, as we have read this in Matthew 6, 22 and 23, as we have read about this in 11, or pardon me, Luke chapter 11, verses 34 through 36, we keep hearing the word lamp. And that lamp is not a candle. That is a lamp, a Jewish lamp, that literally is holding oil. It's an oil reserve. And that, that fire, that flame, is burning from that lamp. Amen? 
And the Holy Spirit in the Bible is a symbol of oil and a symbol of fire. And God is telling us before he returns to buy more oil for our lamps. Amen? Buy more oil for our lamps. The other day before Christmas, my son told me, the youngest one told me, he goes, you, you're probably going to be mad when I tell you this. Now we're out working. We're out, Jose, working in the yard. And my son tells me this while we're working. 13 years old, just turned 13. He goes, Dad, since Tristan left, I've never worked so hard in all my life. And I go, yeah, because you would run up to your room while Big Brother was working outside with me. He goes, I've never worked so hard in all my life till Tristan left. And I go, you don't know what work is, buddy. I'm going to really work you. And then I start going into this Marine Corps thing. And I go, maggot! Okay, so... I've only done that a few times to him, but I'm like, you dirtbag, get up and rake more leaves. And he's going, and I go, there's no telling what your brother's going through. But anyway, this is the crazy thing. We cut down a lot of limbs and we were burning, the, we had a little pile and we were burning in the backyard. Right before Christmas, we were in the backyard and we were burning these limbs. And I told Colton something that's very interesting and I want to add it today. I told Colton, I said, you see that fire? And Sean, the fire was going out. And I go, sometimes you got to stoke the fire. Sometimes you got to make the fire. And he goes, well, how do you do that, Dad? Ken, I took the shovel and stuck it right under the fire, and I lifted up that. And when I did, the oxygen got under it. went, and it lit up again. I go, yeah, sometimes you got to work on the fire. And can I tell you, going into 2021, can I tell you that God is calling us to buy some more oil? And God is calling us to let the lamp and the fire of God burn so bright in our lives that it illuminates through us and that we bring in a great harvest of souls because the light of the kingdom of God is burning in us so bright. Would you stand with me all over this place? The lamp of the body is the eye. And if the eye is full of light, how great is that light? But if the eye is dark... How great is that darkness? I, I'm going to ask you, just would you bow your head with me all over this place this morning? And if you're here and you'd say, I, I don't know your name, but pastor, I'm here to tell you I've been walking in darkness. And I want to ask Jesus into my life. I want to ask, G, I want to ask going into 2021, going into a new year, I want to ask Jesus into my life. I don't want darkness in my life anymore. I want to ask Jesus. If that's you, would you just put your hand up real quick? I'm asking Jesus into my life. I'm asking, yes. Anybody else? I'm asking, yes. I'm asking Jesus into my life. Yes, I'm asking Jesus into my life. I don't want darkness in my life anymore. I want, I want Jesus to be in my life. Let me, would you pray this? If you lifted your hand, would you pray this? And there were hands that went up all over this building. If you lifted your hand, would you pray this prayer with me right now? In the name of Jesus, I ask you, Jesus, now to come into my life. I ask you, Jesus, now to forgive me of my sins. I ask you, Jesus, that your blood would wash me right now from all my sins. Cleanse me of my sins. I renounce them and I forsake those sins now. I'm not going to repeat them anymore. And Jesus, would you come in and would you fill my life with the light of your love? Fill my life with the light of your power. Fill my life with the light of who you are. I love you, Jesus. I'll never be ashamed of you again. Would you take the hand of the neighbor around you right now? And would you begin to pray right now all over this building, all over this building? Would you begin to pray, Jesus, fill us all with your light. Fill us with your light. Fill us with your light. Lord, body, soul, and spirit, I'm asking you right now, I'm asking you to fill me with your light. My fire's been going down a little. It's been, it's been getting down a little. But Lord, I'm asking you to make the flame burn bright in me again. Let the flame burn bright in me again. Father, give me fresh oil. Give me in this day when the bridegroom's getting ready to return. When we're at the end of the days, Lord, would you fill me with fresh oil? I don't want to be found with one not having oil. Fill me with your flame and fill me with fresh oil right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, would you cause Mountain Family Fellowship Church to be a place full of the fire of the Holy Ghost and the oil of the Holy Ghost. Lord, fill us with your fire. Fill us with your oil. Lord, we want more. We don't want less. We want more in this day and in this age. And Father, we thank you for your saving grace. We thank you for your saving power. 
And Lord, set every captive free in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fill us up. Fill us up. I'm praying right now. You fill up Paul and Connie right now with the oil. Father, I pray you fill up the Tappy household with the oil of the power of God in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, Lord, that you would fill us all up with the power of God. I pray, Father, for the Raider household, you fill us up with the power of God. I pray in the name of Jesus for the Nelson household, you fill them with the fire of God in the name of Jesus. Lord, the fire of God. Father, that you would fill me with the fire. You would fill my sons and my daughters with the flame and the fire of God. Fill us with the Holy Ghost and give us more oil in Jesus' name. Give us more oil in Jesus' name. Do you love the Lord today? God bless you and God bless you. Listen, listen, if you don't have anything going on, on Thursday around 8 o'clock we're going to be here and I'm asking you to bring some fattening food. Bring some queso. You know what queso is? It's called cheese dip. Bring some cheese dip and some guacamole. Anybody know what guacamole is? I love guacamole. It doesn't love me, but I love guacamole. Bring some fattening food and some of those uh, little smokies, you know, with the barbecue on them. And some of them got some pigs in the blanket. And, ooh, you would think that I didn't have this Christmas feast. With, I mean, it's like, what in the world happened to you? But... We're going to meet around 8 o'clock. We're going to have a great time with fellowship and with food. And about 1030, we're going to start worshiping and we're going to pray the new year in on Thursday night. So God bless you guys. I hope to see you guys New Year's Eve. We're going to pray in the new year. Bless you. Bless you. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year again. God bless you guys. Bless you. Thank you so much for coming. Hallelujah.